Welcome back, 0K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 33, and we remain looking over some of the C test matches from earlier this morning. Next match, or this match rather, is Marquis and Aquanim on Baron. Let's just get that started. So, Aquanim is the main mastermind behind the C changes. So, I'm curious to see how they're going to play with it since they know how it's meant to be designed. Marquis, on the other hand, I mean, this is not the first game they played this morning. I'm only going over a selection of the games, I'm not going over every single one. So this is not the first game they played with this new C. And they're starting out with Cutter, as is Aquinum. So both players going for a pretty similar start. Cutter Hunter for Aquinum, which I don't find terribly surprising. I mean, I imagine that people are going to be messing around a little bit with their opening Raiders, but, I mean, it's Raiders are Raiders, really, when it comes down to it. And at this point, it looks like Aquinum losing the Micro War here. And the Hunter not going to be able to do much damage because, well, it'll get disarmed. I mean, this has 170 disarm damage, so it will take a couple shots to disarm the Hunter. But that won't be too hard, and there's the Hunter for Marquis as well, so both players with their Hunters. And see how that goes in a couple seconds. I mean, I imagine it's going to be entirely in Marquis' favor. I mean, for one thing, the damaged cutter appears to have gone away or gotten repaired. Because that is... That cutter is perfectly healthy. So I can end with a little bit... Well, I mean, a little bit of a pressure advantage. But unfortunately, that hunter about to take some... Well, about to go down, taking quite a bit of damage. And the hunter for Akunum down. Hunter for Marquis. Or one of the Marquis' hunters is going to go down soon. But unfortunately, that cutter also down... So, Aukenim losing that fight and forced to retreat. Not able to even do much damage thanks to the disarm. Switching over to the Sea Wolves instead. Not going to worry so much about trying to deal with things on the surface, going below the surface. And with that Hunter in play, it's not going to be easy. I mean, it's still very possible for Marquis to fight that. I mean, yeah, the Sea Wolf can't be disabled, but or disarmed rather, but it can still be hit. And Hunters hit hard. They've been really buffed up for their weight. I mean, 200 damage a shot. They're basically duck level. Which is fine. I mean... See the two, Well, okay, Seawolves are 200 metal. Hunters are 100 metal. Yeah, I mean, ducks are, what, 80 metal? No, that's fine. It might need a little bit of tweaking, but I don't see that as being a huge problem. Anyhow... I can they seem to be running through pretty much all the unit types. I mean, obviously they're going to switch to riots, because they do have a lot of raiders to deal with. Marquis also switching to the Corsair, the Riot. So, I imagine at this point Akinem's going to have a bit of an advantage just because they're able to get the drop on Marquis. Marquis should have... Yeah, they have radar coverage of this. So both players are well aware of the other one's positioning. And in comes that Corsair. 1350 Metal, or 1350 Health, rather, coming in there. 220 Metal, rather. Unfortunately for them, they do not have any defenses against submarines. So an dedicated anti-sub is in order. I mean, hunters, there we are! Dedicated anti-sub, three hits, and that that sea wolf is dead. So one more volley, that sea wolf has to go back, get repaired. Has to be really careful right now. At the same time, Marky is switching over to Mistrals. They seem to be just wanting to try everything. I mean... They're probably going, well, I mean, I have raiders. I've got to fight riots. Let's build skirmishers. That's yeah, pretty sensible. They have the hunters to deal with the sea wolves. They get mistrels to deal with the corsairs. Then all they have to really worry about is sneaky cutters coming in and killing everything. And we're disarming everything. And then allowing everything else to kill it. We haven't actually seen any mistrels yet, though. I imagine they're basically like enforcers. They're not that different. So it's the same idea, just cheaper. And with fewer missiles. But yeah. Same general idea. Lightweight Enforcer. Lightweight and actually not very... No, decently strong. It's hard to say. I mean, 130 damage per shot isn't that weak. Especially for a homing missile. But... Yeah, that's one thing about torpedoes. They're not homing. I don't think. Shouldn't be homing. Oh no, they are slightly homing. Never mind. Slightly... Never mind, what am I saying? Thousand nine, yeah, never mind. They're perfectly homing. They home perfectly. I just keep expecting torpedoes don't home, because that's not a thing torpedoes typically do. Whatever. Games are games. They have their own logic. 
But that Enforcer getting too close, that's not how skirmishers... I mean, that's the thing with skirmishers. You get them too close to a riot unit and they die. So Marquis losing that Mistral. Marquis really losing a lot of territory, though. Aquanim very slowly but surely getting their territory. Marquis... Marquis and Aquanim actually relatively even economically, but Aquanim is getting ahead. They are building up their metal extractors around the southwest. Nothing over to the northeast for Aqu for Marquis. So Marquis still has some stuff to work out. Hmm. Oh yeah, people pointing out, uh, Sprang pointing out that the Mistrals, Mistrals are like slashers that can fire and move. Because apparently slashers used to be able to fire and move. That was a thing they used to do. Mistrals are that. Homing, firing, moving missiles. Oh no, I'm thinking rockets. Rockets don't homing. Thought torpedoes were like rockets. At any rate, Marquis with quite a bit of firepower coming in here. A couple of hunters do go down, but not before managing to get through some of the, well, some of the defenses, not all of them. The urchin, however, does go down another three urchins already in place, so Aquanim is still fairly well defended. Their commander is not under too much threat, but Corsairs for Aquanim not able to quite protect their mariner. I mean, they succeed at least at getting rid of Marquis' forces, but losing their mariner in the process means that they're going to have to spend another minute or so going back there to the southwest to rebuild, and that's always super important, as I always, always, always point out. Kill workers first, and then you profit. And yeah, miss missiles can fire over each other. They're a very effective skirmisher. And that is pretty much the ideal skirmisher. They're like a fast rogue. Although, admittedly, C units in general have been very fast. Like the overall speed of... what the... oh. The overall speed of C units is quite quick. Even the... well, the riot unit nominally. 96 elements per second. Actually, faster than the skirmisher now that I think about it. And then the Sea Wolves, even faster at 111. I mean, they're glaive speed. So, yeah, ships... Just have a different level of speed overall, considerably higher than everything else. Which is not surprising, given that there's not a whole lot of terrain to hide behind. So you kind of have to be able to retreat quickly, otherwise you just die. Although, to be fair, they're also kind of like vehicles and thus have a turning radius and have to deal with all of that stuff. So it makes it a bit tricky. So they're basically vehicles, except hovercrafts are vehicles at the sea. I guess they're like heavy hovercrafts, except they don't go on land. At any rate, Marquis is pulling a mariner into harm's way as there is this nice little sea wolf coming in here and not much to deal with it. There is a sea wolf as well for Marquis and the siren. Marquis with the first siren in the game in combat, whereas Akunum decided to go for a Ronin. We'll see how that goes. If Marquis keeps all of their mistrals close up to each other, the Ronin actually will be able to deal some damage. It has some nasty splash. So that will be effective. And Mistral's getting rid of those urchins. Seawolves trying to get rid of them. Of course, the real question is how effective is that going to be overall? Because... Sheesh. I mean, is that going to be effective? Looks like it should be relatively effective. I just... I'm surprised there's no hunters or anything to help deal with the Seawolves, but... Oh. Well... Whatever, it doesn't really matter. That was actually Mark U. Seawolf, but regardless, there's the Ronin, and there's it missing. Actually, not managing to do a whole lot of damage. That being said, Aquanim's commander relatively safe unless the Siren gets close, and I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. There are no Hunters coming in, there's just Mistrals. That's almost entirely what's being built right now. Aquanim going for a lot of Seawolves, realizing there's no anti sub. Well, there's the Siren, but not much dedicated anti sub. So. Seawolf coming in here. Okay, it's Marquis Seawolf. And Aquanim decides, can't win. Throws in the towel. As Marquis applies too much pressure, and Aquanim is not able to maintain their economy. Down they go. Actually, Marquis had the economic advantage the entire game. It's not, no, not economic advantage. They had mostly economic advantage. They had a unit value advantage the entire game, though. Holy crap, that's a massive advantage. I mean, considering that's a consistent advantage. Yeah, Mistrals are definitely scary. And I'm not surprised, too, because they're a fast skirmisher with a homing weapon. And normally, either skirmishers are slow, 
Or if they're moderately quick, they either have to stop to fire or their weapons at least aren't homing. And even then... Yeah, because scalpels are slow as molasses. Slashers can't move and fire at the same time. All the bot skirmishers are also slow as molasses, and none of them have homing attacks. So... Unless you can't racketeer. And that only disarms. So yeah, there's not a whole lot, really, that's precedent for this. I mean, it's 240 metal, but when you consider, say, a Rocco is 130. But then a Slash is only about the, it's about the same cost. So yeah. Definitely has a hard weakness to subs, but throw in a few Sirens or a few Hunters or whatever, and that becomes a lot harder to deal with. Anyhow... The next and, I think, last match for tonight is going to be Nemor versus Don on Dune Patrol. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Let's do another one. Nemor versus Markeves on Baron again, because I want to see what Markeves does against Nemor, because he's on Nemor's awesome micromanagement, and I want to see how this plays out as a result. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 